Okay, we're just going to do a quick run through on a few examples of how to um, how to think about Google things to do for different types of tours and activities company. Uh, we've got Chris with us. Chris is the world's leading expert on Google things to do. So he's going to go through a few screenshots and answer some questions on some products. So Chris, let, let's, let's use um, New York as an example and look at three or four different types of companies in New York. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so city sites in New York, um, most people are going to understand what they do. They love lots of hop on a pop bus tour. They also sell attractions. So right at the top layer there, they've got Empire State Building tickets that they sell directly. So I think we agree, Chris, the, f the first thing any company should do, if, if they're an attraction or they sell attraction tickets, that's the number one thing right now that's getting tons of traffic. So Yeah, yeah if, they, if they sell like a, an attraction ticket on its own, maybe not part of a bigger experience, but if you sell any attraction tickets, then it gives you access to what and Google thinks to do is known as the admissions section, which is the one that's driving the majority of the traffic right now that we see. So it's a good, um, it's a good way of getting people onto your website, even if it's not your main product. It's a it's, it's a good entry entry point to to get you traffic. So can we look at that? Let's let's do an Empire State Building search and see where these guys could or should be showing up. So this is a this is a mobile view because it's kind of the best way that uh, Google Things to do works, and I think we all know it's how most people are searching these days. So if I search Empire State Building, New York, a um, couple of things. First of all, I get this carousel, which is yeah. Uh, we'll, come, we'll come back to that in a second and talk about that how that's important. So you can see here, and this also works on Google Maps as well. So if someone searches Empire State Building on Google Maps on mobile they'll see a tickets button. So you can click on that and you have this admission section here, which is all people who sell tickets to Empire State Building. And you can see that the price is $44 from City Sightseeing New York. So if they were on this list, they would be here <clears throat> above or below Groupon, but you know, still pretty high up in the in the list it's quite a long list uh, so so if they price that right now say uh, i don't know the regulations on pricing that product but if they price that at say 43.99 they'd be number four on that list they'd be right above groupon yeah and at 44 they'd be same either above or below groupon yeah right so th so that right now and uh, i think we worked out that there's one official which right now is the empire state building mm -hmm. and they're getting the most traffic from this display right now yeah but the ones just above it are probably getting well they're getting a good amount of traffic we know that they're, they're getting a lot of traffic they're still even though they're above and significantly cheaper if these prices are right um they're, the, the, the officials still get seems to get more there's right. a few partners we work with where we work with the official and we also work with the cheapest option and i've seen data from both and the official still gets more traffic than than the <clears throat> right. So, so f first of all, first of all, if you are an attraction or if you sell an attraction ticket on its own, that's your best place right now to get traffic. You need to submit products on this admission section. You submit a product; it ends up on the admission section. But that's that's first priority for anybody as an attraction or selling attractions. Yeah. So let's go back to Greyline New Greyline New York. Um, what what's next? This is city sites in New York. Same thing. What's so, next? So if if we do a search for um, so, so the first one was points of interest, which is attractions, places like that. But what if I do is just a search for New York tours, which is probably the top search term that they would use in their SEO or their or their Google Ads. So if we search New York tours, we got. This carousel ad or carousel here, um, and I think this gets a bit more specific. So I'm I'm guessing that sometimes they'll put New York bus tours would probably be another one um, that they do, uh, and we're not getting a carousel on that one. Um, but on the regular tours, you can see we've got the carousel here. So 
So carousel is triggered for most of that kind of search, not all. And that's, I think carousel is always at the top, isn't it? Above. Yeah. So that's above standard Google ads. So can you just scroll down a bit? So then you got carousel at the top and you've got one, two standard Google ads. All right. Click on that. <clears throat> yeah. So you've got Pyotr on there, you've got TripAdvisor on there, nice double dipping, then you've got the business section, and then you've got the Viator organic. So so we think this carousel has taken something like, this is based on a marketing agency that told us, something like 20 to 30% of the traffic, right, is now going to this carousel instead of the standard ads. Yeah. So how many products are in this carousel? Is it fixed? Um, It's not. I've, you know, you can see I've scrolled quite a bit already and still scrolling. So it ends here. But that's... Right. So the carousel, you, you do need to be on Google Things to do to be on the carousel ads. You have to set up a product on Google Things to do, submit that to Google, and then create an ad campaign per product. That's how all these companies are getting their products on this ad, on this carousel. We know it's working. You set it as a um, return on investment, return on ad spend in Google. And we know from people we work with, this works extremely well. The OTAs have been doing this for quite a long time for, oh, I think almost, well, it's been about a year now, hasn't it? More than a year. Yeah. And there's a good chance that you maybe already have products in these carousels, but they are through your OTAs and you're paying yeah. a commission you pay on that, which, is probably a lot more than you would pay for the ads themselves. Yeah, the numbers we're hearing about, these, these get a massive return on investment, far better than standard Google ads. So, so that'd be the second thing. So first is, if you do not missions or an attraction, do that. If you're not in do not missions or an attractions, then look at your Google ads. It Chances are, if you're already spending money on Google ads, then you should be spending money on these carousel ads as well. It's, it's They're mostly showing up in the same places. The carousel doesn't trigger on quite as many searches, but they're adding more and more searches every few days or weeks or months. So they're becoming much more broad as far as getting these to show up. Um, so that's probably the second thing to focus on the ads now. And I don't think we would have said this a few months ago, but this is becoming increasingly important to get these ads set up. Yeah. Because your competitors or your OTA partners are already doing it for you anyway. Right. Um, All right. So we covered the uh, we covered the ads carousel back to the city sites in New York. So they've also got bus tours which go around New York City. Um, do you want to just click on one of those, Chris, on that um, yeah. one day tour? So I think everyone understands how hop on a puff bus tours work. They go to lots of different places within New York City. Um, one place I know they go is is um, Times Square. So if we do a search for Times Square in New York. So that triggers the carousel again. So they could be showing up on, on that carousel. I'm sure that's a popular search term, Times Square. And if you go down and click on this tickets section of Times Square, there's an admission section. Do you want to just show us that again, Chris? Yeah. So there's, there's one admission for Times Square. It's it's not really an admission. It's just a, it's a square. It's not even a square, but it's it's free, but they still have a little section on there, and that link will go to timesquare.com or something like that. But then the other thing that happens below that is all these experiences. So these are all the products that are set up that go to or through Times Square. <clears throat> oh, and that's Top View Sightseeing. So that's a comp competitor of City Sightseeing. And most of the rest are OTAs, it looks like, isn't it? Yeah, now you can click on these. You can see the a bit of information about the product. And then when you click on that, it'll take you directly through to whoever's selling that product. So in this case, it's Biddy Guides and it's, it's a direct to their website. Um, you'll see probably a lot of, uh, as you can see, a lot of OTAs. So again, your tours may already be on here, but if they click on it through Get Your <laughs> Get your guides getting the money, you're paying them whatever percentage you pay them. So 
kind of covering the last bit again. So you've got the carousel ads, that's per product. So you can set as many of those up as you like. So if you had five, if you had five products going to Times Square, you could set up five products on Google Things to Do, and you would get five products potentially show up on the ads carousel and five products show up on this experience section. Is that right? Yeah. So if someone searches Times Square and you have this and you you have this carousel and you have so Times Vital Square. might have a few on that today, right? Do you want to just have a look? Yeah, Vital's got a few. Group has got two or three. Yeah. So, so you could you could set up a few products on the carousel. Yeah, just just based on if you have um, Times Square set as a point of interest on your tour, and someone searches it, you should appear here. There'll be other things that will make you appear. So, depending on the content in your product. They could search New York tours. I think we showed that earlier. You know, they could just search New York tours, for example, or things to do in New York. And this carousel appears. You don't really have much control over that. Google's going to choose where to show your ads and when to show them. Um, but, you know, the, their goal is for you to spend money. And you only spend money if you make money. So they should hopefully be doing the right thing by you to to make sure your products are triggering in the right place. Yeah, and I, and I assume it, it's not like standard Google Ads where you can only get one ad unless you're vital and you can do a vital and a trip advisor, but let's not go there. But you but you can add multiple products to this, so it's just more bites of the cherry, right? And if, you're, if your settings are set to return on ad spend, then you may as well get more bites of the cherry. It just gives you more volume yeah. as Vitor and Groupon and others are doing today, <laughs> so obviously it works. And obviously, because this is a hop on, hop off, I'm sure they've got a lot of points of interest. So Times Square is just one that we've chose here. But you got, you know, Central Park and you know, or whatever city you're in. If you're a if you're a bus company that visits a lot of different points on a tour, then you can add all those points of interest and potentially appear in the carousel and also the experiences section for for those points of interest. Right, so a, a walk and talk company, a bike, com a bike tour company should all be doing this. They should be setting these points of interest and possibly doing the carousel if they want. Yeah. And then they could be in as many of these experiences as, as possible down below. Right. All right, good. Um, let's move to a bit, bit more of a niche one. So let's go to um, the kayak company that we just looked for so i think you searched that before right and it, it it does show up on a new york search but it's just outside new york okay so you do a search for new york kayak tour the, the carousel pops up i know sometimes it doesn't it's not consistent but um it's, it's shown up here so these companies are all paying some of them are not even kayak tours but they're still showing up there um okay and then the, the the one we found was the um on the hudson river do you just want to go to that website and we'll look at that so these, these guys are outside of new york city um these the com companies like this that we see that they're quite difficult for google things to do and they, this is similar to a lot of boat companies and fishing tours that kind of thing so anywhere where you start obviously on land and you are and you're on the water by definition, almost you're not going to points of interest. It's not a main. It's not a main attraction. You're not going into observation decks and museums and that kind of thing. So these, these are probably the the less, the the, the lesser performers right now on Google things to do. Um, yeah, anything, anything, anything where it's like a body of water or, you know, in the middle of nowhere, like a lot of. ATV tours and, and stuff that's, you know, where you're not really at, at a point of interest. The whole point of it is that you're away from everything, you know? Yeah. Um, but with, but where you can get featured on this stuff is that, that you may not, you may not trigger any on any points of interest, but for search terms. So example, we've just searched New York kayak tour and we have a carousel, which means there's potential here. 
Um, and okay, so one second. So same as before, if if you were already paying Google, doing Google ads for terms like New York Kayak Tour, then you should do this as a as a Google things to do. It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, but you can see here that the first. I mean, there is not really any ads, normal Google ads for that search term, which might be your thing, but- Interesting, there's triggering things to do ads, but no standard ads. I haven't seen that before, but yeah. Yeah. So. So if you were if you were this, this kayak company now, you'd set up a handful of products for ads if you want to do ads, and then what? Set up two or three products just to show up on the organic, on the experiences, on a few, points of interest that aren't maybe major yeah and there's um you know there's a new feature called popular tours and it's expanding all the time and uh yeah, well, well let's do that on the food on yeah the last example so so for these guys i think they've got quite a lot of products actually i would set three or four products up on google things to do get them submitted it might not get a ton of traffic today, but like with everything Google, you do the right things at the right time, you get things set up properly, Google starts to recognize that. And as Google starts to feature more products like this, and they do want to feature products like this, they want to feature all these things to do products. Um, they're just not getting the traffic right now because they started with this admissions, attraction stuff. And in time this will grow so I, if i was these guys that we and we were talking to them i'd recommend they get a handful of products set up now maybe one in each category if they've got different areas of tours and then keep an eye on it um and then what on the next example we're going to look at this popular tour section which if that fires uh platform wide it's going to change all of this and it's going to change all of our recommendations so so the last example we're going to look at food New York food tours. And we sort of touched on this doing like the walking tour stuff and the yeah. Thanks. What about if you're a food a food tour company and you go to points of interest? So Times Square we already talked about. Um yeah. what if we do like a Chelsea market? point of interest. So if I'm just searching for Chelsea Market in New York. So that's the point of interest. So that triggered an ad carousel. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got this ticket section, which is not as prominent on products like that. But you can see here is similar to the Times Square. It has this admission section. And then has this experiences section again, which is tours or products where these companies have added the Chelsea market as a point of interest that they visit as part of their tour. Right. The the key which we get a lot right on this is is that restaurants are not applicable. So a lot of these food tour, food tour companies go to restaurants naturally. And they'd like to add those as a point of interest, but restaurants have their own sort of flow within Google. So there's no space on that restaurant search to feature experiences. Um, on, on restaurants, you know, that it's all about doing food delivery and that kind of thing. So it doesn't fall within this today. So if, if I go back to New York food tours as the search term, so this is the, the thing we were talking about about the popular tours so you can see here first of all you got spawn you got ad another ad you got an organic listing you have this businessy section and then you have this popular tour section so this is the this is not out in the wide world yet um we have access to it um right now as a Think as a Google partner, or we're just lucky, or something. But um, we can see it when we search, and it shows you a bunch of food tours. This is all powered by Google Things to do. So here's an example. So this NYC tours 
is actually a is a is a Magpie customer. So I have them set up. So this is this is their their account. So they have four products in Magpie. They have their they have four products live on Google Things to do currently. Uh, I can click into so, so they have their food tour here. I'm going to the their things to do section. I'm just going to show you what they've done to set up this product. So this is their this is the link to their product. This is their price. Uh, this is we've covered this setup on other videos, but we just want to show you here exactly specifically what a, an example of a specific product might look like. Yeah. So here's a few points of interest that they include on their tour. That also helps Google. Can we just uh, look at this admission included free stuff? So you've got Columbus yeah. Park there. So that's that's a free that's a free um, point of interest. So that's why you've been able to add it. So now that was that was like Times Square, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the five points. And some of these, like the bakery and cafe and stuff, like we mentioned, these are probably not doing anything for them other than you know, it just means Google now knows that this product is based in New York. So they know to trigger for things like New York food tours and stuff like that. Right. Um, they've got their own company location here. So, and there's a, probably a few things they could do to tweak this to, to make it better. I don't know if they visit Chelsea Market on theirs, but that might be one they could add. Um, next, we have... a. So their content, so description, highlights, what's included, what's not. So one second on that, Chris. I, yeah. I don't think we're ready to recommend yet that people put the keywords in the description. But, well, you, you always need keywords in the description, but I don't think we, we should recommend that people change that yet. But on the next version of this, this popular tour section, if that pops up widely, it looks like it's going to become more important. Yeah, from what I can see it, the it's pulling content from your comp your product name and your description so so it's, it's kind of like original best seo rules of, of yeah. back in the day where you need those keywords in the description including your product name because yeah. that's all google sees on this they don't see your website they don't see your meta tags they don't see all the other stuff you've done for seo that they're, they're only looking at this product information which um, is submitted directly to Google, not for your website. You can see that they've set themselves up as a, there are food, food and walking tours as the categories. These are uh, Google's categories. And you can see the images that they've added for that product. And then this is what's showing up here. So they're using that first image you can see. Um, and if I click on this, you're getting the content that we've seen in Magpie there. So that's the description, highlights, inclusions, exclusions. And the reviews at the top, right? That's what that's what they submitted. So they, they just yeah. submitted that as well. The price that they submitted is all in there. Yep. And then if I click on visit site, it's going to take me directly into their, their website. So Yeah, and we've done videos on this to kind of explain the program as an overview, but still the same rules apply. Every every click from Google Things to do, every every visitor goes straight to your own website directly. And you can see here again, this is pretty packed with OTAs. And that's just because they are they were quick on this. Google wants you know operators. Google wants operators in here as well. Yeah. Um, so the only reason that it's filled with OTAs is because not enough operators are jumping on. This is another one that's a Magpie customer, actually, is Avital, our Avital Food Tours. So they're actually the only, oh, and like a local tours is another Magpie customer. So of these... And these these links are all free, right? This is not a paid section? This is not paid, I mean, other than being a Magpie customer. Yeah. But yeah, it's not... It's not a Google ad. This is organic. So uh, everything we've shown you, we've shown today is free except for the carousel. The carousel is a pay, a pay to play, um, which is kind of it's part of Google things to do. It does have to be set up via 
Google things to do and Google ads, which we're not going to get into today, but you do need it to be on Google things to do to be part of that carousel. Um, we work with a lot of marketing agencies. The marketing agencies run the campaigns on the Google things to do, but we just help do the initial setup and get the product submitted, um, which has become quite, become quite a um, common relationship we have. Um, Let's finish on that. I don't want to cover everything. We we could, we really could talk about this for hours. Like I always say on these videos, this is all. This is changing. Google's making constant changes to this. They're testing. They're improving. They're in it. the The general direction, and it's only been one direction since they started this, but it's been more and more traffic. It's been a one way, a w one way to just cover more and more surfaces. Uh, the biggest change we've seen in this whole time is this popular tour section. If that pops up and goes widely, widely displayed, it's going to change everything because it's going to take a chunk of those free organic searches and it's going to really bury the rest of the searches below that. So yeah, and even be out there talking about that a lot more. It's just not on all searches right now, so we don't talk about it too much. Even uh, you know the, the the operator booking module, which is another thing they have coming up, which is basically. The admission section appearing on companies like uh, um, sightseeing companies rather than just attractions. So pretty soon, if you clicked on this company, for example, um, it would have a tickets button here and it would have its own admission section with all the people who sell tickets to this company. Um, so. I don't know when that's going to be launched. They said by the end of the year, I guess we'll see. But if that's the case, you I mean, you're going to have, first of all, the carousel, and then you'll have Google things to do listings within these. And then you have this popular tour section again, you know, Google things to do. And, and this is all, you know, just on the main search result. So you're going to see just the, Clarify. We we think this is where it'll end up. We don't we don't know any of this stuff. Google doesn't tell us their plans, um, but we do track it and we see what's live on the site, and we know how this stuff's kind of been rolled out. And we, we do look at other areas as well, like Google Shopping and, and Google Flights and Hotels to get an idea of where this thing where this stuff's heading. <clears throat> All right, we'll uh, we'll wrap up for today. Um, we're always here. Reach out if you want to get yourself set up on Google Things to Do. It is getting quite complicated. Um, once you get your head around it, it's not too complicated, but it does take a bit of work to get set up. A lot of companies are doing a lot of business already on Google Things to Do today. They get there's a ton of traffic coming through this, and it's increasing every every week, every month. So we're we're here to help. Love to uh, chat to anybody. Thanks for listening.